And next, we're going to go down to Monticello, Illinois, one of the best cellos in Illinois. We're going to talk to Tim Stock. Tim, how you doing? I'm good. And yourself? Good. How's everything hammering out at the Farm Bureau there? We're in crunch control right now. It's <laughs> the last day before the Christmas season, and uh, we're actually getting ready to close for the next week. So we're just kind of cleaning a few things up. We're getting ready to enjoy the holidays. Well, very good. You messaged with a Christmas story that I definitely wanted people to hear. So go ahead and tell your story. All right. I appreciate it. Well, back in August of 2016, uh, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law had decided to start the adoption process. They were unable to have children themselves. So they decided to go through a private adoption and met with an attorney. And shortly after meeting with the attorney, uh, they received a call that they had found a mother who was further along than normal, but was also incarcerated at the time. And the attorney just felt like it was the right situation for him. So after 12 days after their first meeting with the attorney, the birth mother had accepted him. So it was a very short turnaround. That sounds remarkably fast. I caught all of us off guard. It was unbelievable just how quick that turned around and my sister-in-law always jokes about how when she got the phone call from the attorney that said, you know, the, the birth mom had accepted them, that she just kind of stuttered for a minute and said, but I just got a dog, which they did. They just got an, a dog. So <laughs> so it, it caught her off guard completely. But the thing was, the birth mom was down in southern Illinois in the Grafton, Edwardsville area, and they spent a lot of time driving down there to meet with her. And they met with her, I believe, while she was incarcerated for a little while. And then she was released. But once she was released, then, you know, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law were providing for her. They had to find a place for her to live. They were providing clothes for her. They were taking her to doctor's appointments. And they even went so far as to buy Christmas gifts for two other boys that this woman had had who were living with the birth mom's mother or their grandmother, I should say. Okay. Is it like as part of the adoption deal? Is that part of the deal? They went above and beyond in that case gotcha. um, as far as buying gifts for her other kids, but she wasn't able to provide for her two boys. So Matt and Kelly took it upon themselves to provide for them. Matt and Kelly being my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, sorry. Mm -hmm. But they went to the doctor's appointments. They got to hear the baby's heartbeats. They got to figure out hospital arrangements because at the time, you know, she was eight months along. Yeah. So it was going to be coming quick. Late November, early December of 2016, it kind of became clear to uh, Matt and Kelly that something was off. You know, biological mom kept talking about having the baby elsewhere. She mentioned that her mom wanted the baby to be given to a, a family member instead. But then the birth mom kept saying, no, you're going to be the one to get him. Gotta. So. Hmm. And then communication with the birth mom became kind of difficult. So Kelly talking to the attorney, she was talking to the medical facilities, even talking to DCFS, getting them aware. She made some connections on Facebook with family members and then found out that the baby had been born on December 17th. Oh, no. And the birth mom had no communication to Matt or Kelly about this. And they also found out that the birth mom all along had intended for the baby to be given to a cousin out of state. And so, you know, we were all upset, you know, my wife and I and Matt and Kelly, especially, and then, you know, my wife's parents and my parents were even upset, you know, about this, made some calls and found out that actually the baby was prevented from being able to leave the hospital. He was in his car seat, ready to leave. And the nurses stopped him. And they put the baby into temporary foster care. Come to find out that birth mom had been using methamphetamines. So uh, there was drugs in the child system, which, meant, you know, went, he ended up in DCFS care. That's the reason that the baby was not released is because the mom had meth in her system. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. So they set a court date for December 21st, uh, you know, two years ago today there was a chance the baby could actually come home with Matt and Kelly. Um, they were trying to work towards that. If the parents had signed away their rights, which is what they should have done in the first place, but they didn't do it. So the day night before the hearing biological father was calling and asking for money from Matt and Kelly in order for him to sign his rights away. Mm. So he was trying to bribe Matt and Kelly 
for them to pay him in order for him to sign the paperwork. They declined it. Well, uh, okay. Obviously, At, during this time, where is the baby? The baby is in hidden foster care. They did not release his location, but he was being cared for in a private location. Okay. Gotcha. Trying to go through the courts to do this properly. Kelly was on the phone with her attorney quite a bit. And I recall the night vividly where we're sitting there at dinner, you know, a couple of days after we find all this out and we're getting, Kelly's getting notifications while we're sitting at the dinner table from the birth father asking for this money. And of course she's taking screenshots on her phone, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But the weird thing was we found out that on the 21st, Matt and Kelly went to the courthouse to explain what had happened to the caseworker and DCFS wasn't even aware that this woman was pregnant somehow. So it was, it's just a weird circumstance all around. Well, then the biological mom and dad refused to sign their rights away and the baby wasn't able to come home on our side on the 21st. So, you know, things got really tense. Even the out of state family was at the courthouse that day. You know, they were all trying to lobby with DCFS, but in the end, they thought we were going to get him. So Christmas was pretty tough in 2016 because we were all hoping that we would have a little guy with us. Mm -hmm. You know, we dealt with it, but it was struggling and we trying to asking a lot of questions of why it happened, how it happened. But then early January, on the 6th of January, DCFS notified him and actually DCFS brought him to Matt and Kelly. They brought the baby to them so that they could take care of him. They had been registered foster parents through this whole process. Ben was actually, the baby was actually a ward of the state and the state had declared Matt and Kelly temporary guardians of the baby. We went through, you know, quite a while and Matt and Kelly have had him since then, since early January of 2017. Mm -hmm. We had some rough situations in there because there were problems with DCFS. They were trying to get the parental rights of uh, the birth parents terminated, which took a lot longer. There were some hiccups with court cases, different caseworkers were being changed back and forth with DCFS. And I think they finally ended things. They they went through five caseworkers in this time frame oh before gosh. the adoption. Yeah. So finally, in beginning of 2018, they terminated the parental rights for the birth parents. And we honestly thought that was the last step we had to go through yeah. in order for this to in order for this to go through. Well, you know, we found out that paperwork had been filed and then lost and then filed and then lost. <laughs> In the grand culmination of things, this past Wednesday on the 19th, the adoption process was complete. We were in Edwardsville for the hearing, and Ben is now a part of our family. So my brother-in-law and sister-in-law have a two-year-old son now. It's been a rough two years, but this is one of the best Christmas presents we've gotten. So. I haven't gone through the the fostering experience. Mm -hmm. but I, I've always wondered about that because, especially with like a situation like this, you wouldn't know for sure if the child was ever going to be taken away. I mean, because I would think that would always be in the back of your head that the, oh, yeah, the kid's going to be taken away. And I wondered if I would be kind of afraid to get that close, you know, give my whole heart to the child when I knew that. So, I mean, it says a lot that your family was able to do that, knowing the potential heartache that they could potentially be facing. Yeah. With my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, I'm, I'm not sure that that thought ever had crossed their mind because, you know, I think that the care and the love and the nurturing that they were given this little boy, you know, in their minds and in their hearts, they knew that he was going to be with them for the rest of his life. I think with, you know, the way that DCFS, some of the caseworkers, you know, the way they had talked to them, you know, they were working for Matt and Kelly to keep him, to make sure that he stayed with them. I'm not sure it ever crossed their minds. If it did, it didn't come out to me uh, in their presence. What they've gone through and all the hoops they had to jump through, it was definitely reassured my faith in some of the system but as long as it took i have my my, my doubts about the system too <laughs> losing paperwork and then getting it back and then losing it again and getting it back and changing of so many caseworkers and yeah 
which, you know, that job, I cannot imagine that job in the first place. It's got to be a very difficult job to do for being in a DC, DCFS office. But the end result was the greatest. So Even like early on in the story, because my mind automatically gets upset that, that they had bought presents for the, the mom's other kids. But, you know, yeah. when you think about it, that's probably was one of the nicest things that people have ever done for those two kids. So, I right. don't know. It's hard to open up your heart at times. Oh, it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're right. Yeah. But, what did you get Ben for yeah, Christmas? Uh, what didn't we get Ben for Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a farm kid at heart. So I, in fact, this fall, I took him on his first combine ride with a friend of mine over here in Monticello and we had a great time and got him a lot of uh, John Deere stuff, got him some toy tractors and so we've uh, we've got him some little farm playset stuff. He he's learning the agriculture ways right out of the gate. Did you just force the green stuff on him, or did you like give him a choice? So, you know, here's a green tractor, here's a red tractor. Which one do you prefer? Um, I know the I answer, think. so don't lie. I, I we pretty much forced the green yes. stuff on him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he has a fun time playing with it, and and even you know we've got some farm animals and stuff like that, little toy farm animals that he plays with, and we're teaching him the sounds, and he's having a ball with it. So it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Well, that's awesome. You're gonna have a good Christmas with your family. Um, I'm sure the whole process is, is probably gonna make uh, the adoption just that much more sweeter. So I wish Absolutely. everybody there a happy Christmas. I'm well, so glad you. that Ben has been able to find a good family in this world because that's not very easy to do. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're having a great time with him. He's, most of the time he's smiling. You know, he is two years old now, so we're trying to prep ourselves for that too. So. <laughs> yeah, just but, wait till uh, the teenage yeah. years. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I'll leave that to uh, Matt and Kelly to deal with. I'll be the uncle that, you know, spoils him rotten. So. <laughs> well, Tim, thank you for sharing your story and Merry Christmas. Hey, not a problem. Thank you. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I think that one deserves the, the bells. Most definitely. Right? Can you imagine?